this is Lumpy Lumpy We're not going to go out to Texas. And this is us. So there's more, but um, we'll show everyone the rest later on. Hi guys, Sagbonani. This is Zanel and Jaffa, the Unlearning Lady. And this past weekend, I've just had my Umemulo, which is the second of two coming of age ceremonies that are done for a young Zulu woman. So it's been an absolute crazy weekend, but I want to just create this video to give you some insights about three key things that I had to unlearn before I did the ceremony. You see, I grew up as a young Zulu girl doing a lot of the practices of the culture, but unless I had gone through these three key things, I would have misunderstood, misinterpreted, and lost the beauty and um, intimacy of the ceremony so I'm gonna run you through those and then in between what I'm going to do is also show you a bunch of different videos of me on my special day that I took for you guys just to show you how amazing it was what we did what's a part of the ceremony and hopefully use that to prepare anyone who's having their umemulo soon but also anyone who wants to understand just how much unlearning is involved in culture and tradition but my journey of unlearning as I did this amazing ceremony this past weekend so come along with me on the ride and i'll break this video up into those three key unlearnings that i had to do let's go got some unlearning to do hi there i'm zane lenjapa known to my clients as the unlearning lady a past primary school teacher and now the world's leading voice on using key unlearning principles to self-disrupt get unstuck and transition successfully all right so unlearning number one is that culture is set in stone now this one goes without saying but a lot of the time we hold ourselves accountable we hold ourselves captive to what our culture dictated at one point in time so much so that when people practice in different ways from us we often ridicule and we often judge what those people do during my preparation for my umemulo what i found i had to do a lot of was ask friends who have done it before ask colleagues who've seen it ask a bunch of different people do some research online and what i realized more than ever before was just how much culture changes but also how that needs to be okay because culture like so many other things is subject to our constantly changing environment and lives right so for example originally this particular ceremony called umemulo which is done um, originally for a girl who was turning 21 now i'm not 21 <laughs> as so many of you will probably already know um so it was a like a few years after 21 that it was done for me um it, it's originally supposed to be done when you're 21 but i was able to do it later on and actually so many other young women have this ceremony done after 21 and some of them even merged with the traditional ceremonies that they do pre-marriage so the part of the marriage traditional ceremonies as well and this is such a key part of us understanding just how much culture changes and so what most people do especially when it comes to tradition today and in cultures even in organizations is that we understand the theme what was intended by the culture and then we adapt based on where we are currently as a people, as society, what we've learned from our past and what it's taught us as well. So that's definitely my very first key unlearning is I had to understand that culture does change. It's not set in stone, although there are certain practices, traditions, routines, rituals that we did over time. I had to let go of this idea that things had to be the way my great, 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 great grandfather did them and understand that I'm living in a different time but it's important that I honor the tradition, I honor the culture, I honor those who came before me with an understanding of how I can step into it. So that's a very big one. And I think another example I can think of with regards to this, that has, is a huge one, and you might know it if you are accustomed to the practice of Umemulo or the ceremony of Umemulo, is that originally why this was done is to thank. So it was done by parents the parents of the young lady who was having the ceremony and it was intended to thank her for carrying herself well for representing the family for being a good custodian of the family name and just be 
being um, someone who has been respectful, someone who has been kind, but more especially, and this is the key part that many of us still hold on to, is that it was originally done for virgins. So the girl had to be a virgin in order to have umemulo done for her. But over time, this is another part of culture that has consistently changed. Other things are, and this is something that we did, you'll see some videos of me and the girls who were helping me out on the day, is that on the morning of the actual ceremony, so Saturday morning, you wake up and you go and you take a bath in the river. So early in the morning, we left at about three o'clock in the morning, it has to still be dark. And you take a quick dip in the river and then you, you jump back into the car and you go home or you, you, you um, walk back home while you're singing and, and you know, doing all of this, this beautiful traditional stuff. But over time, what we started to see is that some people will, will not do that. If they don't live close enough to a body of water, what they'll even do is they'll warm up some water, they'll jump into it, they'll jump into the bath. They do all sorts of different things. And it's so easy for us to look at what people are doing and ridicule it or, or point fingers and say they're wrong and say all sorts of things. But it's really important to understand this key unlearning, which is that culture is not set in stone. It's constantly morphing and moving. And it's so important for us to actually allow that so let me know in the comments what are some other things especially if you're accustomed to this particular practice if you've had your own umemulo before in the past you've seen it you've heard of it you've interacted with it somehow let me know what are other ways that you've noticed that culture is not set in stone through the practice of umemulo what are some of the things you've seen happening that didn't particularly happen back in the past or you've noticed are quite different let me know in the comments i'd love to read some of those and maybe i've even experienced some of those as well during my um ceremony this past weekend now let's go over to a quick video where you'll get to see me gisina duksina is traditional dance in the zulu culture where the the main part of it that most people absolutely love is the lifting of the legs so basically there will be drumming um and you'll be accompanied by other singers other girls even uh, guys can join in here there's music there's singing there's a leader of the song and then you dance to it so a very pivotal part of it is the lifting of the leg to the rhythm and to the beat and then and, and you see that you the joy and and there's ululation and lots and lots of um of energy to the drum it's 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 music that a lot of the time honors who we are honors our creator but also honors the ceremony and what we're here for so have a look at this really short video and see how i was getting down this past weekend <laughs> enjoyed that you see i had a lot of people saying to me ah oh, zanella can we see a video of you seeing that people that weren't uh weren't present on the day with me saying they don't trust <laughs> that i can do the traditional dance i hope that video was proof that i'm still very much um in touch and when the drum comes in i can show up for it so the second thing is the second big unlearning that i had to do was around independence I very much believed, and, and I think as a person, as an individual, as an introvert, as someone who is big on independence, I often carry this idea that collaboration and independence struggle to coexist. But what this ceremony really taught me is that the two can exist together, but also that they can thrive together. And in the presence of independence, that's when collaboration truly happens. And it sounds like such an oxymoron, but it was so, so beautifully shown. I'll give you an example. During the particular ceremony or during the entire event, so this is from, let me maybe just give a little bit of insights here. During the entire week, the practice is that um, the girl who has the ceremony offered up for her will be in the house the entire week. And she'll sit there and she will um, cover her face in that beautiful red clay, uh, which makes your, your skin amazing, by the way. Um, and she'll sit in the house, but she'll also sit with her fellow young ladies who will accompany her on the day as well. And they'll sit in the room. Um, it's called umgongo. They'll all sit in the room together. They'll sing, they'll talk, but they, they, they're not expected to leave that room. They sit in the room for the entire week. 
but I could see as people were coming in, as these ladies were coming in and helping us to practice our routines, my father with coordinating the conversation with um, our ancestors, my grandfather who came in, how he came in, my mother coordinating all of the things that had to do with making sure people were fed, my friends coming through for me on the day. There were so many different parts that had to play a role in the bigger picture, but each and every individual played their part so well that they allowed the greater ceremony, the greater picture to sort of come together in such a beautiful way. I'll also give you another example and now I'll show you this amazing video that you'll see. This is a part of the um Umemulo ceremony and um, it's called in Tizwa, so this is the, the, the men or um, the, the men. There were some, some grown men, but some young men as well. So we used to say, use the word in Tizwa. Um, this means that they, they almost, so is is the patch of grass or the piece of land where the actual ceremony happens and the young ladies perform their dance and everyone comes to watch and they put money on, on my head to coma. This is when they would do it. <laughs> they were doing that entire thing so they, they basically what happens is that um, these men these elder men but also these younger men will cross that patch of land and it's a symbol of almost solidifying what has just happened on the day it's fantastic <laughs> I could receive the revenants, the beauty, the honor, the lessons of this amazing ceremony called Ume Mulo is a big one for me. And it was the idea that perfection is rewarded. See guys, Mina, I am a huge perfectionist. I am self-acclaimed, I own it, I'm working on it more especially. And this is one thing that I learned during Ume Muluwami is it's not about perfection. It's not about being perfect. It's about dedication. It's about, um, it's about consistency more than anything, but it's also about discipline. And if you really look at the ceremony, this ceremony is intended not to reward a girl because she was perfect not because she was perfect and this is where so many of us make the mistake umemulo is not supposed to reward you because you've been the perfect girl because you've done the perfect things because you've been the perfect person it's intended to reward you because you've been disciplined because you've been consistent and you have shown up and that's the thing that i've learned is that it's not about perfection it's about showing up it's about being consistent it's about being disciplined in your pursuit of being the best version of you possible and that's why it's not about whether and this is i mean this varies from person to person the aspects that are the original aspects like um not having a baby being a virgin this that the other um are all really starting to be almost recreated or reimagined because one of the biggest purposes is we've realized that it's not about perfection but it's about discipline it's about a young lady having shown discipline having shown consistency having been loyal to a promise that she made to herself loyal to the teachings of her parents and those who were her guardians and that for me is probably the biggest biggest ones is i've had to unlearn this idea that i've held as a long time as a young zulu girl of being perfect i grew up being encouraged by my society to be consistently perfect and more than anything, more than the fact that that could be encouraging, it's actually extremely detrimental to us because young Zulu girls or even young women of color all over the world grow up with that idea that they need to show up as completely perfect, as blameless, as flawless, as impeccable. 
but really Ume Mulo has shown me that it's not about perfection but it's about consistency it's about showing up as your best self consistently all of the time and always putting your best foot forward that's what gets rewarded not perfection and i think that that's why people say that um done is better than perfect oh my gosh done is better than perfect and so i guess it sort of works there so three key things that i absolutely had to unlearn in order to to step into this next stage of my life so what is that next stage basically because umemulo is done at that age of around 21 for a girl it is a symbol for her parents to say you may now step into the next stage of your life what is that perceivable next stage it's things like having a family it's things like being married it's things like moving out of home it's things like starting your own thing standing on your own two feet whatever that means in different contexts that's what the ceremony is intended to do it's parents almost giving you the keys to your future perceivably or giving you that nudge of encouragement towards something bigger in the future so that's me now that's where i'm going i have a few ideas of what that looks like for me going forward i am actually now 28 so i'm not 21 i'm 28 <laughs> which some of you probably already knew um because i definitely don't look 21 anymore but that's the next stage for me it's looking into how do i build me how do i build a consistent ongoing brand where i still honor my parents i honor my loved ones i honor what i've been taught i honor other people i honor my culture and i honor this life i think more especially and that's what umemul is about it's not just about saying oh really great job on the first 21 years of your life or first 28 years of your life in my case it's about we acknowledge what you've done go out there and do more go out there and do greater go out there and continue and impact and do more that's the biggest thing for me it's not about the past it's about going forward into the future and making an even bigger impact than what you've done and those are the three key things guys that i had to unlearn before i did this amazing ceremony and i hope that you've enjoyed this video i'm now going to play out with a few more videos of the amazing time that we had and i hope that you enjoy these videos and you share them please share this video with anyone who will benefit anyone especially like i said who is thinking about having the ceremony of umemulo done uh, maybe they want to prompt their parents if they're a young zulu woman and they would like to have it as as part of their journey it's an absolute beautiful thing usually it is prompted by the parents but it's nothing wrong with the nudge <laughs> and then having your parents decide if they want to honor you in that particular way or if you just want to learn about it uh, but more especially those unlearning lessons are really big ones that independence and uh, collaboration can't coexist i had to unlearn that i had had to unlearn the idea that perfection is what's rewarded because it isn't it's consistency it's intentionality that gets rewarded and the very first one was that I, I had to unlearn this huge idea that culture is set in stone because it's not and so those are the key, three key things that I had to unlearn on this amazing journey Livumile, guys, it was an absolutely amazing ceremony. And thank you so much for coming along with me on this ride. I can't wait to see your comments. Which of the three key things did you also have to unlearn when you interacted with your culture, with your tradition, and one of the deepest ways you had to recently? I can't wait to hear your comments and make sure you leave them down below for me and I will interact with you when I get an opportunity to do so. Sending you so, 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 so much love, prayers, love, light, and absolutely everything you hope to achieve and keep on learning to get unstuck and transition with confidence Mwah. bye for now Hello.